Water security remains the major challenge of the Owasso Basin due to increasing water demand from competing needs. Hakuna mtu wengine inaongezeka. Maji ile inatoka kwa mlima si ni ile ile tu. Wakati tunalima wakati ya gazi, maji inapungua sana. Hata unaweza enda na ukose kupiga maji na pump juu hakuna maji kuko na jua kali, kuko na shida juu maji inakuja tunapewa na rationing. Kwa hivyo ukikosa kuchota maji kwa hiyo siku unaweza kaa hata siku ine bila kuwa na maji. Chinda ile iko unakuja kwa wakati mto inakuwa imepotea hakuna maji. Pampu ni mingi na maji ni jogo. Na kila mtu anajiandika na hiyo kasi ya maji. Sasa ukimwambia awase kupiga na hiyo dio chakula yake ananyunyuzia maji ataenda wapi? maji ndio ndio tunatumia kwa kukunywa hata mifugo yetu na hii maji inatuletea magonjwa mengi sababu hii maji saa nyingine ni safi saa nyingine ni green tukienda kwa madaktari wanatuambia hii maji tunatumia ni mbaya sababu iko na iko na uchafu mingi sana tunapata magonjwa ya tumbo ya ile ya kila aina hata moemba tungeomba watu ya juu wajue hata chini kuna wa kuna watu sisi kwa na shida kubwa sana ya maji tukiwa wakaji hapa kuna tunategemea tu hizi mvua ya season rains inakuja inanyesha kwa, kwa mwezi mbili sasa huwa tunakuja kutafuta maji kwa hii laga na hii laga si ile ya kusimamisha maji ni ile maji inapita tu ikienda ikipita tu ikienda kama wamasai tunategemea tu kushimba shini unatoa hii mshanga shangarao unaondoa unashimba shini mpaka unambata maji ukipata maji Maji ni kama inakaa hivi inakaa black. Tuko na marori hapa. Hii marori tukijenga hiyo ukuta, hii marori wanakuja kuingia hapa ndani. Kushota mchanga yote. Rori mbili ikiingia kwa hiyo kwa hiyo kwa hiyo kwa hiyo ukuta, rori mbili tu inaingia inachukua maji yote. Tukijaribu kwenda kukimbilia wale wale watu wa wanema, tunaambiwa wamepeana lenses. Tuko na lenses ya kushota mchanga. There are three primary issues facing water management in the country. A lack of adequate financing, especially from national government, a lack of elaborate and clear guidelines to show how institutions can help this work, and a silo approach to a resource that often spans multiple counties. In order to deliver water for all by 2022, you need something like 1.74 trillion. Closer home, Uh, we need about 20 billion to do that. If you look at uh, the allocations, it's usually about 200 uh, million a year. So looking at that time span, you, you, you almost have a, a shortfall of something like 15 billion. Our ecosystems are also changing, mainly because of our intervention as human beings. We are doing a lot of destruction to it in terms of water abstraction, in terms of ecosystem degradation, in terms of uh, sand harvesting, in terms of uh, river banks you know uh, being degraded there'll be conflict between communities there'll be conflict between uh, human beings and wild, wildlife there'll be conflict even between ourselves because there'll be no food for us to be able to sustain our, our, our lives and this has a very big impact in our on our livelihoods in terms of food security in terms of availability of water not just for our own use but also for the ecosystem and also for the wildlife Access and use of water is a basic human right. This entitles everyone to sufficient, safe, acceptable, physically accessible and affordable water for personal and domestic uses. The law provides for this management of water in rivers at the community level through the Water Resource Users Associations (RUAs), but they are given no resources to carry out this mandate. 
The Water Resource User Associations comprise of primary users of the water on the ground and these are the people who have a big interest in ensuring that the water resource is well protected and sustainably taken care of. I find that in many cases they are weak in terms of their governance structures, how they organize themselves, how they are able to manage their membership. By having weak governance structures then that affects their technical capacity to be able to undertake their mandate on the ground. Again, there isn't a very clear way of how RUAs finance the operations. Before the 2016 uh, Water Act, we had Water Resource Management Authority. And this changed in 2016 to Water Resource Authority. So the whole of management of water was left out for water uh, RUAs. The Water Act 2016 empowers individuals within certain area uh, to have a say on the management and on the use of water. Currently, we are not able to do much because we are depending on the funding from our water sector trust fund. That funding is not forthcoming. And when it's coming, it's coming with conditions to the extent that a particular woman may not be able to fulfill a particular condition. Working here for Kurum, this is a Mabaruazetu, Samuimu, and Mabax. Atuna ofisi, atuna ata hii eh, ika draw tu, hile ika draw ya kuweka vitabu. Hii ruwa yetu bada ni changa sana. Water programming must be addressed at landscape and basin levels. To understand the dynamics of water in the ecosystem and its importance to people, livestock and wildlife. The issue of water governance, water resource management can only cannot be solved in isolation. We really need to think of it from the basin perspective or the landscape perspective, including also the other watersheds and other counties. Within the Partners for Resilience, we bring expertise in terms of disaster risk management, uh, ecosystem uh, management and restoration, and also issues on climate change. We are implementing this program through an approach called integrated risk management. And this is mainly looking at what is happening, uh, let's say, globally in terms of climate change. We are seeing so many issues uh, coming up, so many risks, climate-related risks. And so these risks are also affecting us in the developing countries in terms of the impacts which are really severe as compared to the developed world. In response to the new laws and the situation on the ground, the people around Iwaso Basin are trying novel approaches to water resource management in their area. One effective example of these new approaches is the Mount Kenya Iwaso Water Partnership, MQEP, which was launched on the 14th October 2016. MQEP is a multi-stakeholder platform bringing together public, civil society and private sector actors within the Upper Iwasungiro North Basin to engage collectively in water resource use, conservation and management. MQEP's task is to provide a platform for dialogue, information sharing, collective action, advocacy and capacity development in order to address the identified challenges. One of the biggest role that Mount Kenya Waso Partnership, Water Partnership is doing is bringing the various key stakeholders together in a common table to have this dialogue about water. I see Mount Kenya Waso Partnership uh, being like the nerve center for uh, water management within this region. To achieve the dual objectives of strengthening RUA capacity as an integral organization for subcatchment level integrated water resources management, as well as increasing water resource authorities' efficiency and effectiveness towards enforcing compliance with standards for the management and use of water resources, we propose a RUA services agreement. A mechanism for strategic partnership between WRA and RUAS, where the RUAS offer specific delegated performance based services on behalf of the Water Resource Authority. The Water Resource Authority then remunerates the RUAS on achievement of the set performance targets. RUA Services Agreement as a model will help RUAs better manage their catchments as part of the money collected is to be channeled back to help in repair and protection. The RUA Service Agreement is very important because it can help to structure and clarify this relationship between the Water Resource Authority and the RUAs around responsibilities that work for 
uh, regulation and management of the resource and thereby help in the, in the business of water resource management, improving data, whether it's stream flow data, whether it's uh, abstraction data, can help in surveillance of the, the catchment, the riparian. If there are things going on in, on the riparian area, the Water Resource Authority in their office are unlikely to know. It's the people on the ground that will know, oh, there's something happening in the riparian that can affect the water quality. The Water Resource Authority should know about it, but they don't have the capacity to be everywhere. Ngosishi Water Resource Use Association is an example of this approach rolled out in conjunction with the local community. Ngosishi Water Users Association is an association of 16 water projects, uh, 9 commercial farms, seven, com uh, 7 community water projects, but actually even last year we increased now, we are almost 20 water projects because we have other borehole members. And the spring production is only 64 liters per second, so you can see the impact because of the good management. <laughs> Malashoka Marato He Mete Yakohada to Kihada Ku Mwena in Newa Mae, Negada Tedio Shotigo Kuago ni Mai in the Matuketi of Wakatia Tukua to Menjengewa e in common intake Lukua Natatisos Matatiso Mingi Sana Yamaja Yaku and Natosha. I can go to Jengewa e common intake, Nimefindika Kwangu Sana to Nalima, Napata Masao Mazuri. MQEP has also come up with an innovative financing model called the Ewaso Maji User Savings and Credit Cooperative, EMUSACO, that is paramount in upscaling adoption of water harvesting, storage and application technologies in order to energize new investments in water storage at household, farm, subcatchment and catchment levels, particularly for smallholder farmers. The Waso Maji User Circle is distinct in this landscape because we mainly focus on water conservation and helping uh, local farmers to mitigate the effects of climate change by helping them to invest specifically on water technologies that will help them to store water during the rainy season and will better enable them to still continue with their farming even during the dry seasons. Most local farmers can't access financial facilities easily because most of them do not have major assets that can back them up to getting funds, especially for water conservation. So we are willing to go the step with them and give them finances to put in this water infrastructure. And this, we have also uh, put up very considerate uh, interest rates just to ensure that they get a chance to be able to build in these infrastructures in their households and really build their resilience. Ah, mimi ni mede benefit na kitu moja, mabo ya masomo. Eh, mimi naenda kwa masomo na ni naele fushwa kuhusu mabo umuhimu wa kusto Maji. Yale mapato kidogo ni napata, na safe na m -Sako. na nikicha safe na m -Sako. duration ya miezi tatu. Nime qualify kupata loan, ambaye ni loan, hainanga ile interest kubwa. Iyo m -Sako, nitawa approach hawa, wanaeza kunyonyecha leakages, mahali nitaeza pata, liners, drips, na mambo ingine kama iyo. We can make greater impact if we move together. The national government can help maximize and optimize the use of water resources to the benefit of all. As illustrated by increasing their financing toward the water sector, especially at the community level, because community agencies in the subcatchment are best positioned to operate and manage water resources for the Water Resource Authority using the Rua Services Agreement. 
This will provide a flourishing framework with a bright future for all Kenyans and the resources they need to thrive. Water is a um, shared challenge and so going forward it is important that all actors realize that water resource management is also a shared responsibility. And going forward I would urge all partners to continue working together collectively to ensure water security for all. There is an opportunity for different stakeholders to come together and demonstrate uh, water stewardship. The Mount Kenya Iwaso Water Partnership provides an elementary demonstration of how this stewardship can be put in place, how it can be executed. There is a lot of learning that can be picked out and which we can uh, also institute in other areas of the country. Individually, we have a responsibility and part of it is raising our own individual awareness around the the water resources that we rely on for our own lives. And at the same time, it requires more investment from, uh, from government, and not just investment in infrastructure. This requires investment also in the institutions. And it, in a sense, brings us back to the Rua service agreement that there has to be an openness to work with organizations on the ground and make sure they have capacity. For the EMU circle, is something I would like to see it not just implemented in upstream, I would like to see it even in the downstream. Because what, as I say, what these water issues are, are very much interlinked. And if we can be able to have a success story out of this in the upper stream, I think the same can be replicated in middle stream or downstream.